Good morning, it is Tuesday. And today we are going to talk about the third means, the visit to the Blessed Sacrament. But before we start, let's say a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass being offered throughout the world, I offer you all my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day, in reparation for the offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, for my sins, and for the sins of the whole world. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The third means to acquire this perfect love of God is to visit the Blessed Sacrament often. Friendship is preserved and increased among men by frequent visits and conversations. It is by this means that we shall gain and increase the friendship with Jesus Christ. His intention in remaining on our altars is to be continually with us. Judge what must be his sentiments of affections for those whom he sees often with him. There is nothing which gains the heart of Jesus more than frequent visits and frequent acts of adoration in his presence. It is usually at this time that he pours out his graces in greatest abundance. And it may be said that of all his gifts and favors which he gives at these visits, the most usual is the incomparable grace of his love. There are visits of courtesy and there are visits of pure love. If a person is wanting in paying visits of courtesy, it is a fault. But it is on the occasion of visits of pure love that singular favors are conferred. It is sufficient to say here that provided people make this visit with a lively faith and conscientiousness that it is Jesus Christ whom they are visiting, these visits will be found to be an infallible means of obtaining in a short time a perfect love for Jesus Christ. What motive induced Jesus Christ to remain with us after the work of our redemption was accomplished and after his glorious ascension into heaven? Why does he return to our earth every day in an invisible manner? Why does he remain day and night in a humble and obscure state on our altars, except that he cannot endure to be separated from men? that his delight is to be with the children of men? Grieve not, my children, he says to us. I will not leave you orphans. I ascend into heaven, but at the same time I will remain with you on earth. You are weak, sick, languid. You will often be afflicted. You will fear my judgments. You will dread the anger and the justice of my Father, but you will find me in the Blessed Sacrament, a Father who will console you, a physician who will heal you, a guide who will lead you safely, a master who will solve all your doubts, a heavenly nourishment that will give you new strength, and finally, a Redeemer and a Savior. And does all this not suffice to touch the hearts of men who are so much alive to their own interest and naturally inclined to gratitude? Let's finish this video entrusting ourselves to the care, the guidance of our mother, so that we may want to spend more time, 
visiting Jesus in abandoned tabernacles, spread together as a family. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help or saw thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. And may the Lord bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See you tomorrow.